this is the last uh, uh, session uh, webinar that we have uh, before uh, the official kickoff of the uh, hackathon tomorrow. So uh, welcome back, Heather and Terry, uh, and then um, Dongyup and Mindy, uh, two of my uh, dear friends and colleagues and students uh, at Case Western. So um, I'm going to uh, uh, first invite you all to briefly introduce because I, I know uh, Heather and Terry a, a bit, because uh, we've been talking yesterday and the day before yesterday in the case of Ke um, Terry's case. And then Dong Yup uh, and Mindy, I know both of you, but uh, I think uh, for the benefit of Heather and Terry, it'll be nice uh, if you could introduce yourself. So why don't we, uh, and then, um, oh, Terry just left. I was gonna ask her to introduce herself, but, uh, um, so why don't we begin uh, with Terry? Yeah, your uh, um, audio is on, you're, you're unmuted already. So, and then we'll start from you and just brief introduction. So we're working on it right now. Say it again. Oh, well, uh, let's start with the Heather. Uh, I think uh, he's, uh, working on his uh, 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 computer or iPad. So Heather, uh, would you mind uh, briefly introduce yourself? You're muted. Uh... Oh, okay, can you hear me now? Okay, <laughs> hi everybody. Yeah, I'm Heather and I live in Elyria, born and raised. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to see what we can do. My background is in nursing. Um, so I feel like I have a lot of skills that I can pull from that just to help troubleshoot and see what we do to make Elyria grow. I'm terribly sorry, don't wait for me. Terry, it looks like you're wrestling with your equipment. Sorry, I... I just got a call from our uh, contractor who was just finishing his work and telling me that I leave and so I had to go downstairs. Sorry about that. So uh, uh, where are we? We uh, So uh, Heather, you introduced, uh, did uh, Tong Yup or uh, Mindy introduce yourself yet? Hi there, sorry about that. I had a coworker bring by her um, six-year-old son to say hello. So I was, I was distracted <laughs> by the energy of youth. Um, I'm Mindy Bile. I'm at Case Western Reserve University. I'm in corporate relations, and this is my second hack from home. And I'm going to be uh, working as a mentor to support whatever team I can. Yeah. So uh, nice. Mindy um, has been working uh, with XLab, uh, you know, in many uh, supporting uh, roles and advisors, and and has been, uh, uh, you know, in this innovation space for a long time. Uh, and, and actually, before even before she joined case. Uh, so looking forward to uh, having her uh, serving as a mentor uh, and so on. Dong Yeop? Hi, I'm Dong Yeop. I'm a PhD student at case and I'll be um, doing the hackathon, one of the teams uh, helping with the coordination. So uh, Dong Yeop, I am just wondering um, whether uh, uh, there is a separate uh, meeting dedicated for team lead are you sure? Uh, was it the, uh, so? I just want to make sure that your intent was joining the webinar or going to the team lead meeting. No, no. I, uh, 
That one's at 1 p.m. Oh, okay. So this, okay, good. I just want to make sure, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to disappoint you. Like, because uh, there's a specific list of, uh, I, uh, you know, things I think they will go over. So good. Um, so uh, Terry, um, have you, uh, I, while I was downstairs, Terry, did you introduce yourself yet or no? Well, can you hear me? No. Yeah, we can hear you now. Well, then this is, I think this is as good as I can get with uh, out fear of shutting everything off so well i'm just using my phone right now we won't have any video but we had a uh you know glimpse of you uh so i think now we know um it was me know. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm here uh so uh terry uh, also is a uh, uh you know uh resident at uh, Ilaria, and then he's been working on a number of different community engagement projects uh, throughout his career. And uh, he will be joining the hackathon. And Terry, um, you know, and, and Heather, uh, yesterday, uh, just to give you an update, uh, you know, um, uh, Mayor Frank uh, and um, Irene and I went through all the ideas. Uh, and um, the combination of uh, Terry, your idea and uh, a couple of other ideas, similar ideas, and then this oh, blah, man. blah, Ilaria idea, uh, is um, is consolidated and 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 uh, is one of the project ideas. So uh, you know the idea is uh, to uh, to get uh, uh, public spaces or physical spaces, including natural uh, you know parks and you know beautiful spots, hidden spots, as well as uh, you know uh, South Park uh, uh, shopping mall, uh, I believe, and then public square, uh, you know, uh, you know, how might we create uh, a platform where pop-up events can take place and then also using digital platforms to coordinate such things with an intent to uh, get people more integrated and uh, have more positive dialogues and, and so forth. So congratulations, Terry uh, and Heather, uh, you have already made huge, uh, uh, you know, contribution wow. to uh, to the hackathon. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you I, know, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, there will be six more ideas and I think we are uh, all excited about all these ideas and, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll have enough people to work on each of those ideas and, uh, and, uh, and so on. So, well, you know, I think, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, um, uh, Terry and Heather, uh, uh, I'd like to, uh, I just gave a high level update, a brief of your idea to, for the benefit of Mindy and, and Dong Yeop, uh, but uh, you know, uh, you must have thought about uh, the, those ideas even further since we spoke, uh, you know, right. yesterday. Uh, so, you know, would you mind uh, elaborating uh, both of you, uh, you know, I don't care who goes first. Uh, you know, sharing your ideas and then some additional thoughts that you may have uh, to uh, to get some thoughts going on with Mindy and Dong Yap. You know, these are two very creative folks uh, who will be part of the uh, hackathon too. And then they could learn about your ideas and then maybe also, uh, you know, help you to shape it even further before the hackathon. You go, Terry. Okay, thank you. Um, we were talking about taking a pop-up event here and taking a pop-up event there and, and discovering places that we have ignored or haven't seen for a long time or have forgotten about and things like that. And the more places that we can make, we can create ways to see those places we can access the paddleable parts of the east branch of the Black River if we have access to that river, and there are vacant lots on that river, but where there would be access to that river, and what would happen would be that people would eventually, rather than cut through somebody's backyard and get to the river, which always happens, there would be a predictable place where people would come and be able to look at the river, where it's kind of deep and kind of wide, and it's backed by houses on either side, it's, it's banked by the east neighborhood and it's banked by the south neighborhood. 
And if we can get a way to put some floating boats up and down that branch of the river, we could unite the east branch and the south branch of that river and the people that live on the either side of that in a creative and um, friendly way. And I just think it'd be wonderful. Right, yeah. Heather, uh, you want to add to that or build on it or, you know? Well, I think I'm just so excited. Um, I love the idea of pop-up and because I am a spontaneous kind of girl. And, um, but, you know, it's, you can only be spontaneous. I love the idea that citizens, and this is how I would build on that, is I live on the eastern course over by the hospital, right? The East Recreation Center is in my backyard, and I'm there every day with my dogs. And just, you know, I would love more use of even the rec centers, because they have a uh, start down for a space that's by the city already, and we just... Uh, love to see more events just come up. Like we talked today, even like downtown on the air start, like chess club, you know, people could come and play chess or check or any game, you know, board game, and then find some indoor spaces too, because the rec centers already do have indoor spaces in the mall. You mentioned the mall, you know, that could be a use and just have people express their creative um, skills uh just in a more spontaneous thing yet organized so to get uh use technology to link everybody together and i you know had brought up um like a, an example of even uh texting because you know, we get text alerts i just got one this morning for some work to be done uh, uh, Route 57 in an area. It'd be nice if we could even have a text system that people could sign, like, hey, tonight at the Black, or at the Black, or there's going to be this going on, um, or on the square, there's going to be that going on, or a city council meeting even, and you know, we can do about anything. So communication is such an important thing um, to the events out there. So I was kind of dragging on that, but yeah, I I love that to do any. So uh, you know, um, I think the the idea, the inspiration was based on these ideas, and and kind of like a generalize a little bit was, and then I think both uh, Heather and and Terry spoke about the desire to bring people together in the community people with different backgrounds and different sort of, you know, orientations on, on many different dimensions. And uh, we are living in a society where uh, our interactions oftentimes amplify those differences rather than, um, you know, amplifying uh, the common, um, you know, the interests and, and ideals that we share. Uh, and so, uh, and then we don't even have it uh, because we are so surrounded by this cocoon of safety, protective uh, sort of uh, sphere that we carry around uh, because we don't want to be offended and we don't want to offend anybody and, and, you know, and so forth. We really do not have a chance to integrate and meet with others and, and have a chance to really, you know, um, uh, intentionally meet uh, with others uh, for the benefit of bring people together. So, the one of the ideas was that, you know, so, you know, Terry had this idea of a black river and then there's an area where we could have this, uh, you know, uh, floating uh, boat and and uh, where people could meet and, uh, you know, um, could it be then uh, be uh, uh, a one of the platforms, you know, uh, where uh, uh, anchor uh, sort of uh, um, um, complementers would come up and said, you know, uh, we would uh, set up a, a food station there, uh, you know, and sell, uh, you know, sandwiches or hot dogs and, you know, for those, you know, uh, and then, um, uh, and then others come in and said, I could do a talent show. I could set up a booth for people, uh, you know, doing certain things. And Terry had this idea that, you know, there could be a public flat space, just a platform, physical platform, but then there is a digital overlay where people could, uh, you know, kind of like a reserve that spot and, and go or announce that I'm going to be there performing certain things. 
Um, and then uh, the idea is then that yeah. events, uh, information about those events, pop-up events, will be broadcasted uh, in a very intentional way to bring people from different neighborhoods together. And even to the degree that where uh, you know the seating arrangement would create a very deliberate, intentional mingling of people. So you are not surrounding uh, you know, yourself with people that you already know, but rather you will be uh, you know, um, meeting with people, uh, you know, bumping into each other from different neighborhoods and different backgrounds and so on. So we just create, uh, and then, you know, but you're, you're creating an atmosphere where people tend to gravitate toward that, what we all enjoy in our lives, you know, children, food, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, glass of beer and, and music and someone, you know, uh, doing talents and showing off talents and so on. So that's, basic idea that we had. And then, you know, Heather uh, uh, had an idea of like, what if this kind of like a, uh, a public uh, sphere could also include the pop-up events is like, a, you know, Heather's nurse said, uh, hey, you know, I will be out there to uh, measure your blood pressure. That's a pop-up event. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be talent show. It could be something, uh, you know, contributing. Uh, or, you know, I am uh, a uh, pet groomer. I will be there and grooming your dog and, and at a discount, uh, you know, whatever, on, on such and such date. Uh, and people bring their pets and so on. And those good deeds then will be recorded uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, sponsored by uh, local merchants, you know, like, uh, so if you, if you do certain things and they will give you, uh, you know, more resources, uh, you know, so that you could continue to do those things, right? You know, so I think there are a lot of uh, interesting ideas around this. And then the last one was uh, the blah, blah, uh, Hilaria idea was, uh, you know, Irene um, knows about this uh, blah, blah car in Europe uh, where, people are doing ride share based on their conversation topic. So you could not only choose to share ride, but that uh, ride sharing pair is done through uh, your know, willingness to engage in conversation. So what if we create blah, blah zone? Uh, so this is a, a place where you just show up and then I'm in a blah, blah zone. And then, you know, people can come in and then we have just blah, blah, right? So that's the, that's the idea, right? So again, it is like a, all kinds of individual pop-up events, blah, blah, is one of the pop-up. And then, you know, using the platform also, the city could reach out to the citizens, in, you know, informing them upcoming, um, you know, events that cities are organizing and so on. So that's so basic idea that, uh, you know, this kind of like a physical um, space uh, where we could come out and interact. But then uh, that space offers a lot of different venues for individuals to coordinate um, and uh, uh, and and uh, you know voluntarily uh, uh, coordinate uh, you know bottom up uh, and that can be done through the uh, means of digital technology and and the uh, last thing that uh, you know I think Terry brought up is that waterfront is very uh, you know um, limited resources a precious real estate and oftentimes what happens is that the city sells it to the big real estate development firms and citizens actually lose their right to use them in a in a way that they like to. So what if we actually create this kind of like a public space, pop-up space? So, uh, you know, okay, so you're a big time nation, nationwide, uh, a restaurant, um, you know, brand, but you are just one of many uh, folks who will have a uh, opportunity to go there and then pop up uh, events. Uh, and, and so we kind of give that public space, precious public space back to the community members. So those were sort of ideas that all bubbled up over the last three, three days uh, as we were yeah, iterating those ideas. So those are, are awesome ideas. And I, and I saw one that sort of couples it, which is the, the pop-up kit. So you think about, you know, your creative artists, you think about your entrepreneurs, you think about your smaller businesses they may not always have the means or the interest in investing in that type of, whether it's a pop-up tent, whether it's a tent and a, and a sign that can be, you know, modified for sporadic use. But if there were kits available to be signed out, then you could create opportunities for others to, to participate in these right. pop-up events that might not otherwise think to do it. Like I think, Young Jin, about your idea of a nurse. Hey, I could take blood pressure, right? <coughs> But you may not have a tent, you may not have a chair, you may not have a sign, 
right? Yeah. So to be able to participate and have that right. kit yeah. for the back end could be really cool. Yeah, so it's, it's a combination of a physical place and those are physical pop-up kits that city provides, but then they can be, uh, you know, used and mobilized by digital means by anybody, you know? Um, yeah, I love yeah. that idea. And I love because uh, because I feel like we can reach out to more like multi generational because um, I have a big interest in the the youth that you know because um, I think that our youth we have had some interest here in Alira and you know really need to steward our youth you know and I feel like um, that's like one of my missions too is to be available for. The youngster, and they engage more because I was a school nurse at one point too, and I know they're all into like the social media and the apps and so forth. So I think that this could be incorporated to involve, include them more um, for the use of the whole digital platform. It's so exciting. I know nothing about it, but I'm so excited. <laughs> you know, so what I'm thinking, Heather, your idea just give me another idea. So, you know, this pop up kit could be uh, designed so that it is suited to create TikTok video. So imagine that the you know, young kids would come out. They do yeah. a pop-up events, talent show, but the goal is to record it, to put it on the TikTok with hashtag of Hilaria, pop-up events, whatever things. <laughs> I think that would be fa fantastic. So even Terry could show up on TikTok video uh, with, the, you know, so the kids are actually running pop-up, you know, events uh, with a goal of uh, allowing individuals to create a TikTok video content and upload. They can help uh, Terry to open up a TikTok video accounts and show well, off sure you do a commercial. talents, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, it's right brilliant. there from the neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. And that way you're you're empowering the youth to you because they're teaching us, you know, so we're sharing, you know. And yeah, because I call my my daughter-in-law, I call her text for I'm like, come on over, lady, I need to help you do this or that. And it kind of gives her it boosts the self-esteem because she's helping me, you know, to get through. So yeah, that'd be great and a great way to get you know the youth are in our be more involved too they could help us do it you know <laughs> i'm i'm a little going crazy here but you know so uh yesterday i learned that city of miami has just started issuing city coin that the, it's a token the blockchain crypto uh crypto coin uh and um so the way they do it is that they, it's all Bitcoin based. So it's not Ethereum, it's a Bitcoin uh, using stacks. So I'm just learning about it, but then they're actually uh, inviting cities to apply. So the way they do it is that they, the city takes 25% of the, um, the revenue that is generated from the, the mining of the coin the individuals who own the coin gets 75%. Um, and, and they have already raised like hundreds of millions. The city of Miami already raised hundreds of millions of dollars. But imagine that if we go down this path of like TikTok video, uh, you know, and then somehow connect it to the crypto, uh, city issued crypto coin, uh, and uh, I think there's a, some pretty interesting potential that uh, I think, uh, so I sent that link to uh, the site that is now issuing the, working with the cities to issue this crypto. So the Miami is the first, and obviously San Francisco is the second who already signed up. That's, those are the two cities, you know, like, I don't know if you follow the politics of Miami, Miami is like uh, next to Silicon Valley. That's how they are positioning themselves. And it is all in crypto. The mayor is like a little crazy. He's very, very outspoken in terms of like, we're going to bring all the, uh, you know, the Silicon Valley folks, entrepreneurs and startup guys in, uh, you know, Florida. And uh, so I forwarded that whole website to Mayor, uh, you know, uh, we feel for him to consider because I think it'll be interesting for 
city like Illyria to come out and say, hey, you know, we're going to have a crypto, you know, the city coin. Um, what does it actually do and how it is actually being mined and so on could be connected to something like this, right? You know, the pop-up events and <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That, so, uh, that kind of reminds me because Overland has uh, OB dollars. I wonder if it's, I know that's totally different, but I'm just trying to understand what that would be. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that that's, that's an interesting uh, potential, uh, you know, Mindy, maybe we should also have a case uh, uh, coin. Yeah, that'd be cool. Right? Yeah. A case yeah. coin. Um, so. Well, um, uh, Dongyeop, uh, any any thoughts? You've been quiet. Yeah. Um, so with pop up events, um, how would the events be communicated? It, oh, so that idea is that uh, everybody will sign up. Uh, to, so the Ilaria already has a created and um, uh, citizen data pass. So they they already uh, have residents already have an account. Uh, so uh, they can claim it. So they're like, uh, they, uh, if they are uh, a resident in, um, um, in, in um, Illyria, they can just say that I'm that person, you know, here's my address, here's my name, here's my email address, and then boom, they verify it, and then you have an account. And then the idea is then uh, you could, uh, so these are the part of things that we need to think about. So as part of the profile that I control, you know, you could provide some information, you know, like I live here, this is my background, this is what I'm interested in. So then based on that, the idea is that how can we design an algorithm to outreach to people? So it's matching, you know, say, you know, when Terry has a pop-up event uh, and when Heather has a nurse, uh, you know, pop-up event, how can we find people who are most likely to respond and then create a schedule and events in such a way that not only they are likely to come out, but when they come out, it'll it'll amplify the communities and you know mingling and you know diversity and integration. I think that's the idea, right? So it'll it'll be based on that data swift uh, PDA uh, personal data count. So. Um, All right, let's keep getting a, a text message about uh, the one o'clock uh, leader training program. So, so, you know, like as we are uh, just getting close to the uh, actual events, there's a lot of last minute uh, communications. So, uh, you know, Heather and Terry, are you guys are uh, mobilizing your friends and neighbors to join the hackathon? I hope you do. I'm doing the best that I can. I certainly sent the, um... The um, video that the mayor put out yesterday to a number of people, and uh, I've kind of talked about this a little bit to a lot of people, but without the process and without, you know, people have so much on their minds, it's hard to get people's attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. I mean, you know, I think uh, uh, the the idea is that, uh, you know, this is a, one of the first, uh, you know, uh, first of many such events that the Frank, that Mayor Frank uh, uh, is thinking about. So it's not the last time that we are gonna have this event. So there will be another one in the spring semester and so on. So as we repeat these type of events more, the people, uh, you know, know, uh, you know, get to know about it, uh, you know, and then those who participate in the first one know what to expect and how to prepare. Uh, and, and I think this kind of event will get, uh, get more organic and you know, you, you hopefully the city can organize um, itself. You know, without uh, without the uh, funding or support from Data Swift, uh, you know, and so forth. So yeah. Well, you know, actually, though, to be honest, to be totally honest, I think I've been thinking about this since uh, about 2015 or 16. To be totally honest, it's been kind of floating around in my head. And uh, I've told a lot of people about different parts of it over the last number of years to the point where a lot of people don't even want to listen to it <laughs> anymore, really. And this format, this format has just just blossomed. 
it's it's going to blossom thought processes in a lot of people. It really is. I'm sure of that the next one's going to be there's going to be because anything that comes out of this one, people will build off of that enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. I, I yeah. totally agree, Terry. And and one of the things when you're talking with your neighbors and friends and families and like-minded individuals that wanna that that might be interested in jumping into the hackathon, the one thing I would say is because it's a process around innovation and ideas, it works best when there's lots of participants. But I know for some, when they hear hackathon, they think staying up all night and, you know, coding skills and things that they feel maybe they don't have or couldn't bring. So just make sure when you talk to folks, hey, if they want to be on your team or a team and they can jump in for a few hours, that's better than not participating at all. That is true. Absolutely. So, so don't let them be afraid because I because I've had you know, as I talked about my first experience, that was what my neighbors were saying. Oh my gosh, I can't believe, you know, you were up all hours of the night and, and working on codes and apps and stuff. And I said, well, no, I don't have that expertise. And the team set it up so we could jump in and out. And I was on a functional team, so I wasn't advising so that we could jump in and out and contribute our strengths when it was appropriate. So it was not a 24 seven you know, commitment. So, so if that helps, you know, tease people to come participate, you know, by all means, you know, that could be huge. Yeah. So I have to share a story. Um, when I was at Temple, there was a hackathon that we did uh, and it was about community health. And um, the, um, the sort of like a block captains and so on came forward with, uh, the, you know, the area kids. It's a heavily populated with African-American, um, um, you know, minorities in the city, uh, in North Philly. And one of the uh, challenging issues was that, you know, the, uh, the male population with chronic conditions like heart disease and diabetes and so on how can we change the trajectory of this? And, you know, like a temple uh, hospital was like a safety net uh, hospital in North Philly. So they, and, and the sad story uh, was just that, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, adults, patients with chronic conditions, uh, you know, they could, uh, they could manage this, uh, you know, um, if they have a primary care and, and proper, you know, um, channel, Many of them didn't have a health care insurance at the time. Uh, many of them actually didn't trust uh, institutionalized health systems. They would not come. So, you know, they have this diabetes condition, for example, and they have diabetic shock. They are admitted in an uh, emergency room, costing a lot of money to the th system. Then they discharge and then they go back to where they were and then continue and then come back and go out. And, and then it have, goes on until the end of their lives. And then it's just like a bad movie just repeating itself. So the challenge was like, how can we prevent it from happening? And, and so it was hackathon. The idea was, um, you know, what if we do create a game uh, where intergenerational game the game is actually played by the kids in the in the block, and the kids are incentivized to check out with uh, uh, check up on their adults in the neighborhood. Go around and ask them like how they're eating, are they exercising, and encourage them so on and on and on. <coughs> Each time they do it, they earn points, and then a hospital will then every once in a while go out with these kids to measure their uh, you know. Um, Finals, and then if their numbers actually go down, and then then the kids who are responsible for that individual adults, they get like a big boost of their points. And then you know we talked about how the different blocks compete with one another. You know, like uh, so the you know like a diabetes is invading. We're we're heroes to protect our neighbor from the diabetes. I mean, there are all kinds of crazy stuff that we. That's wonderful. We, you know, so what is really interesting is that when we presented these ideas to uh, Temple Hospital, the first reaction is that, you know, we need to get it verified from, uh, from the, you know, members of the community and the members of the community who came up with the idea was there. And they're like, 
I don't understand what you mean. We it's our idea, right? <laughs> and then uh, so we we got so excited um, and we were looking for funding. Uh, and then we went. We thought that it'll be uh, obvious to go to uh, insurance company. So we went to uh, you know um, United Health, uh, and 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 I said you know uh, we presented the ideas, and then all the you know community members were there. After listening this whole presentation, they said this is the the most. Uh, and, they, and they basically said, I I am humbled by the wisdom from the real world. And, and, you know, as a professor who's always being accused of being very naive because I don't have a real world, you know, I'm not living in a real world. I'm living in an academic world. This is like the first time the corporate people said that we are humbled by the, the wisdom of the real world experiences. Uh-huh. You know, it, it, it was, but, you know, none of those people knew how to code. None of those people knew anything about human-centered design. None of those people knew anything about startup. They were just came out with their own experiences, their own wisdom. You know, the instigation of that whole inspiration was one expert who ma- mentioned how um, the uh, in Africa, uh, WHO uh, made breakthrough when they tapped into the elders of the African tribe to check on, um, you know, AIDS, uh, you know, uh, HIV positive patients and like, so you have to do this on a regular basis. Is it, it was really the behavioral uh, intervention, checking up on them with whether they are taking medicine, whether, they, you know, all of these things made a huge difference. So that's all it required. One person dropped that idea and then the members of the community took it off and they're just like, it went on in a wild uh, direction. And um, it was really, really exciting. We, at, 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 we went to the congressman, uh, you know, tried to get the funding and so forth. And eventually we didn't get any funding because, you know, I don't know why we couldn't get the funding, but it's pretty sad. Uh, but it, the idea was so exciting and everyone was behind and we are ready to roll. Uh, but uh, it would be wonderful to uh, replicate something like that here, you know. It certainly would. That sounds awesome. And just... <laughs> It's unfortunate, um, just my experience with insurance and, you know, medicine, it's frustrating because prevention is not profitable. So it's Mm -hmm. almost like you need early intervention uh, with the youth. I love the idea that you took the youth um, to like look after their elders because in turn, the youth are learning how to take care of themselves and kind of stop that illness cycle. Um, so that's brilliant. So if nothing else, you didn't get the funding, but at least some of those youth learn the skills of how to prevent themselves from turning into the elder population. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, the the whole game was designed by the youth. So we actually did a prototyping. And then, uh, the idea was that the youth who participate in the program as an ambassador, it was called a health ambassador. So it originally we said health warrior, but then there's so much of violences, gun violences in, in the neighborhood. They didn't want to use any word that is, you know, related to any violence. So we use the word health ambassador. Uh, and then the idea was that those kids who are selected to be the, uh, uh, the ambassador would be trained by the, the nurses in the, you know, of, of temple, uh, you know, uh, hospital because they need to know what to say and how to say, and then they will be part of the, the field day when the nurse comes out and, and do the vital measures and they will tag along. The idea was that they will be exposed to a alternative career path that they would not be exposed to otherwise. And so that they begin right. to say, oh, you know, I can be a doctor, I can be a nurse, you know, I wanna be in a healthcare business uh, in, you know, uh, industry. So that's, that's another sort of benefits of doing something like that. And then the other thing that we talked about was this intergenerational dialogue uh, that is lacking in African American communities. So youth don't talk to the the uh, the you know uh, uh, middle aged uh, male in general. So they just like uh, don't talk to them. So how can we change that? So you know when you actually begin to think about it, it creates so many unintended benefits that we didn't actually start with. And and. It was a pretty uh, uh, exciting moment when we actually think through those uh, ideas. So hopefully something like that will happen. 
uh, over the week. Yeah. Okay. And I think the idea just in general is just a way to at least kind of throw the spaghetti against the wall to see, you know, who's coming out and then future pop-ups can be designed even around that, right. you know, just ideally, you know, I'm an idealist, so. <laughs> and it's um, all, to, it all, it all knits together because we're kind of reintroducing ourselves to each other. And yes. I haven't seen you for a while. How can I help you? Right, what right. Can we, what can we as a as a group do for you? So you know the way I think about it is that this kind of like a, a, a app, that this kind of a platform, the physical space with this toolkit and platform, almost as if it is a app store. So each pop up event is an app, you know, if, mm -hmm. if you will. So people go and then visit. They can leave feedback. They can leave ratings. So now people know what type of pop-up events are popular. So there will be more of that kind, you know, and then people will see, oh, you know, there are too many of these. So, so maybe there is an opportunity to do something else, right? You know, so, uh, so I think, again, that's a beautiful place where such event innovation can take place. So, you know, healthcare providers say, oh, so Heather is checking on like uh, you know, um, uh, uh, blood pressure and maybe someone else come out and say, I'm going to measure the blue, uh, you know, gl uh, blood uh, glucose level or dental, uh, you know, hygiene, yeah. you know. So there could be just sort of other similar innovations and then it become a cluster, you know. So I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, opportunity, I, you know, as, a, as you can and tell, Heather, I'm an idealist as well. With mm -hmm. the right preface to it, <laughs> yeah. we could an announce announce the area or the the it's coming to and that would that would energize the actual area itself and maybe there's bake sales that could happen over that particular weekend and maybe there's other mm -hmm. things but it would illuminate the pos positive things in the neighborhood the talent show things that might happen and the pet show things that might happen but it would also illuminate the maybe the uh, issues that might be in the neighborhood that then the healthcare providers could then two weeks later after those all have been identified from within the neighborhood itself. Right. You know, we right. haven't seen this guy for a while and he's kind of been having a hard time maybe, you know, and then the whole town can be focused on two or three spots and we can realize that everybody has spots, not just those people over there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Lovely. So, uh, you know, we are coming to an end of the session. Uh, I have another call that I need to jump to, uh, and I'm sure that we all have other things to do, worry about before the hackathon. So I, uh, unless you have other, you know, uh, comments that you want to make, uh, Heather, Terry, Mindy, and Dong Yap, um, I'd like to thank you all for the participation um, and enjoy the dialogue once again. Uh, and, uh, uh, hope to see you all on Friday. So, Thank and uh, our provost, uh, uh, Ben Vincent, will uh, give a opening remark, uh, and uh, and then um, you know there will be uh, a series of uh, talks uh, scheduled on Saturday and Sunday. So while you're working on your ideas, you can always pop back into the main Zoom oh. channel to see those talks. So that those will be uh, you know quite uh, interesting to hear all kinds of uh, people who worked on civic innovations in urban setting uh, will share their experiences and wisdom. So hope to, uh, you know, uh, to see you there, those uh, sessions as well. Well, thank you for bringing it to us. All right. Well, this is so exciting. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I'm just kind of taking a back seat. You know, I'm the idea guy. <laughs> so we'll <laughs> see. Um, we'll see what happens. All right. Okay. All right, we'll see you online. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you, Professor. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. You too.